So Katie, you're here to talk to us about your experience in relation to domestic abuse. Yep. Um, tell me what happened. How did it start? Um, about 15 years ago, basically, we just met in a pub. Everything was all right, you know, as you'd expect it to be. Um, I was 17. He was 36, 37, I think. Um, seemed fine. I'd got a job and everything. Slowly went downhill. Was a bit controlling. Picked me up from work and things. But, you, you know, you just think he's being nice. Yeah. Really. He's picking you up and whatever. Um... It wasn't really till I had my first daughter that things went even more downhill. Um, I didn't really see much of family before that. It sort right. of dwindled off, really. But once I'd had my daughter, that was it. Didn't really didn't see family. I, my sisters had come up. And my brother came at once. Um, my mum wasn't allowed up. Even my grandma, she used to come round every fortnight to start with. And then the last year we were together, she'd come round three times because he'd always make excuses. Oh, no, we're going out. We're going out. And she'd ring and he'd not tell me she'd rang or she'd message. And because, obviously, I didn't have a phone, it was always his. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't ring her. So I'd, three times, I think. We didn't really see her at Christmas, the birthdays and things, her birthday. We never went to her house, never did anything like that. I had my daughter, so I had to stop work. He wouldn't let me go back to work. Um, so how, how long were you together? In 15 years. 15 years in total? Yeah. Okay. Just slowly got worse. Okay. How far into the relationship did the abuse start? It was really from the beginning, to be fair, looking back. Um, he was always sort of protective, as he put it. Right. He wanted to protect. But it was it, just things slowly got, slowly got worse. Obviously, we'd moved from the flat we was in to a house because we had my daughter. Um, I didn't go back to work. He didn't help out with anything. Even with my first daughter, you know, you'd think he'd want to chip in with everything but he didn't um, he didn't do anything around the house and it just slowly slowly went down from there I had to finish work um, and then obviously I ended up having more children yeah. because not because they were planned but because I couldn't go to the doctors and get the pill because he wouldn't allow that it's just say we're busy or we'll ring them next week and then, you know, I'd end up pregnant again. Um, like I say, he didn't do anything, nothing at all with the kids, no nappy, never once changed a nappy, right. never once picked them up when they were crying. It was always, she's crying, sort it, right. sort of thing. Cleaning, he never did any cleaning, but he'd always point out that shouldn't be there or that's dirty or sort that out. Um, he'd call me names, he'd tell me how rubbish I was. The family, it, it, my mum never seen the kids, which obviously my eldest was 13 when she met, met her grandma. Really? So, all just, you know, just everything was controlling. Work, he'd go out, he was self employed, he'd go out to work, but we'd have to go and we'd sit in his van. At the beginning, we'd just sit in his van and then he'd make me get out and go and help him and do the job with him. With the kids just sat in a pram or in a carry cot in the garden that he was doing. So the children would go with you yeah, as well? Yeah, well, yeah, we'd all be in there, yeah. Yeah. So towards the end, he didn't have much on, but we'd still have to go with him. Didn't like spending his money, as I used to call it, because anything over a pound, and I wouldn't buy it. I wouldn't even dream of picking it up. 
at all because he'd question it. Well, what do you need that for? Why do you need that? What's you not? You don't need that. For even food, I wouldn't. We'd go shopping. Towards the end, it was all done online, but he'd decide what we'd buy. He'd decide what we'd cook. I couldn't cook. I could warm things up, as he used to put it, but I couldn't cook because if I cooked, it wouldn't be good enough for him to eat. So I couldn't do it. We'd go on holiday a lot. He had a camper van, but we'd go places where no one else was. We'd go on a campsite and he'd park as far away from anybody else and the kids would still have the routine, they'd still be in the van at seven o'clock, sitting and watching telly, and then they'd be asleep, and we'd go to beaches where nobody else was, and they didn't do the, you know, the fun fair or the arcades, very rarely went in an arcade, or on a beach where there was other children for the kids to play with. It was just always where nobody else was, all the time. We spoke about the children, yeah. And you spoke about the holidays and, and, and you know the difficult times. And in relation to when they started school, yeah. Tell me about that. Well, they they couldn't go to nursery. Okay. He didn't really want them starting school when they started school. He thought that was too young. Right. But obviously they had to go to school at that time. Um, it wasn't until. September of 2017 it would have been that he decided that he was going to take the three youngest children out of school um, I wasn't happy about it to start with but he kind of made it well if you don't take them out then you're not a very good mum because they don't like school which the eldest one that we took out of school didn't like school she didn't get on with school she had kind of separation issues anyway um, he'd always he was all over all the time, really loving with her. I didn't love her, so she had that, obviously. Is that um, what he'd tell you? That's what he'd tell her, yeah. Really? He'd tell her, you know, your mum doesn't love you. She loves everybody else, but she don't love you. And he'd always be hugging her, and if she'd cry, I'd have to pick her up straight away, even though I'd try and do things to sort of stop the separation problems, you know, she'd cry and you do the controlling crying where you just leave them for a few minutes yeah. and then go back. No, I had to pick her up and I had to, every night she'd cry quarter past nine and I used to have to walk up and down in the living room for an hour till she went to sleep. But he wouldn't once offer, oh I'll, I'll do it, I'll give her ear a minute, you know, like a normal dad would, or you'd expect a normal dad to. It was always me doing it all the time with her and then obviously I'd got my eldest to sort out as well mm -hmm. so and then two more children come along but it was still me with all four all the time breastfeeding I used to have to walk around deal with the other children wash pots while breastfeeding because he wouldn't he wouldn't, he wouldn't do anything nothing at all so Basically, he, he made it, so I, I thought the only way through was to take the children out of school. That was it. If I didn't, then I was making them unhappy. Mm. So we took them out of school and I had to teach them, as well as the fact that, you know, he used to say, well, you're useless, you don't know what you're doing, you, you're thick. And I'm there thinking, but you're making me teach my children who I don't, I can't do it. You know, I need the internet to look it up, but he wouldn't let me go on the internet. He didn't like that. I didn't have a mobile phone. I couldn't speak to anybody else about anything. He'd expect me to go out in the morning to teach the children and sort out what I was going to teach them, bearing in mind they were all two years apart. Mm. So I'm having to try and teach them things that I don't even know about, all different ages. And it was hard, yeah. but he wouldn't allow me to look into doing anything. Uh, when we decided to homeschool, he says, "Well, we'll, you know, we'll start doing after-school clubs because I was worried about socialising yeah. for the kids." Yeah. Well, we'll do this and we'll do that, and nothing materialised. They were going to work with him when he was at work, so they'd have to sit in his van while he was at work, and then he'd complain at me that I'd not set them any work or done anything for them to sit doing 
while they was at work. Um, they didn't see any other children, really, for that last year. I just, there was just the three of them. Katie, you, you talked about school um, yeah. and the children being taken out of school. Why do you think that was? Probably because I'd got a bit more confident in talking to parents and parents would speak to me and obviously he didn't like that. Okay. I was talking to people. I mean, when they went to school, he'd drive me to school. It was a five-minute walk, but he'd still drive round to school and I wouldn't be able to get out till he heard the bell. And then if I wasn't back within five minutes, who you been talking to? What have you been talking about? And so it's just, you know, they were late out. No, they weren't. You're lying. All the time. That's all I got. All the time. So I think, in a way, it was to stop me from speaking to it. Because really, in the last year, I didn't speak to any other adults, really. Right. Other than every now and then, if we went anywhere, a neighbour would say hello, and I'd say hello. But nine times out of ten, I'd walk out with my head down, so as I didn't have to speak, in case they did speak and then he'd be wanting to know what I was saying. Although he'd go out and he'd talk to the neighbours and freely and say what he wanted. If I ever spoke to them, it was, well, what have you been talking to them for? Who been, what have you been talking about? How did that make you feel? It made me feel like I was doing something wrong. <coughs> like I shouldn't have been speaking to anybody else. And it made me angry that I couldn't speak to anybody else. I didn't know as stupid as it is, you know, just talking to people is very hard. Yeah. So I tried not to do it. Just put my head down and get on with it. Because it was easier, because he wouldn't ask why I'd spoke to somebody and there wouldn't be an argument as to what I'd said. Okay. You talked about um, socialising and children. Yeah. Um, what would happen with, you know, with friends To start with, with my eldest, um, she kind of had close knit friends and she'd go to theirs and they started coming to ours but it was always, well if they're coming, their mums need to come and pick them up, we're not taking them home and if they went anywhere, they'd have to bring them home as well, he'd never go out of his way to, you know, in, in my view, if somebody's going to have your child for tea, you go and pick them up. Yeah. But he wouldn't do that. It was always, well, if, if they're going for tea, you make sure they're dropping them home. And I always felt awful having to say, well, do you mind dropping them home? Because they're having them for tea, so why should they? But towards the last two youngest didn't really have friends over. Um, when, they, when he took them out of school, the two youngest did have sort of a best friend, both of them had a best friend. And obviously because they were took out of school, they'd stopped playing with them and they'd made new friends. And it was, well, they don't have them anymore, so we're not having them. And that was it, it kind of stopped and they didn't, they didn't see any other children at all. He wouldn't let them out on the street, he wouldn't take them to the park. There was a park at the end of the road. They weren't allowed on there. He'd go, he'd drive, into a village that had a park and let them play on there because nobody else would be there. Right. So rather than take them to a big park where they could interact with other children, they wouldn't do that. 